Hey everyone, it is November 14, 2013. I'm Rene Ritchie, and right now we're going to talk about the iPad Mini Retina launch. This is the iMore Show. Joining me as always, the managing editor of iMore.com and Twitter internet bon vivant, I just love calling you that, Peter Cohen. How are you, Peter? Good. Thank you, Rene. How are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, especially because joining us all the way from England in a reproduction of original Gaslight settings is Richard Devine. How are you, Richard? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's a little dark here. We've r broken the lights, but uh, we'll do what we can. This is how your people lived mere hundreds of years ago. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how they did it. Don't know how they did it. They had people like Jack the Ripper to help them. <laughs> what a helpful chap he was. <laughs> so um, let's get let's get right down to it. We have the app, the Retina iPad Mini is here. Apple had what is perhaps the most bizarre iPad, sorry, the most bizarre iOS device to launch I can imagine. Maybe maybe the white iPad 4 is on par with this, but this is certainly one of the weirder ones. Here it is, and our Richard got one as well. So I'd like to start with the timeline. It was late at night, and Mac Rumors posted a story saying that GSX, and Peter, you probably know about this better than I do, but that's Apple's global services exchange system? That is correct. It's something that Apple uh, stores and technicians use to communicate with Apple. And, uh, practical examples are like, you know, if you're checking the, the warranty status of uh, Mac that's come in for a pair, you would search against a GSX database, that sort of thing. Now, um, I saw this. Uh, I was chatting with Mark German from 9to5Mac about this, and actually we just recorded a whole episode of Vector uh, touching on this stuff, so we're doing sort of a crossover episode here. Um, and again, Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, but GSX is not always 100% reliable. Like my first thought is someone transposed digits uh, because there was no other point of information. It was a single point of data, and it was to Apple resellers. It wasn't to Apple retail. It wasn't to members of the media. It was just GSX at that point. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, a lot of us kind of looked at the um, the report that GSX said that the iPad Mini with Retina Display was going to launch the following day with a little bit of incredulity, like, you know, can we believe the single source for this? Is it possible that a mistake was made? And Richard, one of the other things, because all three of us were, were talking about this when we were going over, uh, we were absolutely going to post it. Mac Rumors was absolutely right to post it. I know some people complain, but no, GSX is a legitimate source. You post that stuff. You do clarify that's a single point of data, uh, and you know, to their credit, they did that. Uh, they put it in context. But Richard, you and I looked at this and said, wait, no UK, no Canada. How does that make sense? Yeah, it, it didn't. It just didn't sit right. You know, there, there was something that just didn't feel very kind of. Apple launch about it, you know, there was no Canada, no UK, no Germany, there was no mention of any kind of European uh, availability, and that's kind of, that, that's not how Apple rolls anymore, you know, Europe is a is a big, big deal, we know obviously Japan and China and places like that, but Europe's a big deal, Canada's a big deal, so it's like, where are they, what are we going to do, I was, you know, we, we were wondering where we were going to get them from if this was, uh, if this was real. So, yeah, and I was talking about it with you and Peter. I was talking about it with Mark Herman. He got his post up where he said, you know, for certain reasons he didn't think he, – he doubted this. He, it wasn't that he thought it was wrong. He just thought that, you know, maybe there was more to this. Um, I put up the same basic thing. You know, Apple usually doesn't do launches like this. But I – it's my job. I waited up. I waited up till uh, 12 a.m. Cupertino time because Cupertino time is standard time for Apple. Now, a lot of people pointed out that it was already the 12th in Australia and there'd been no launch. It was already the 12th in Asia and there'd been no launch. Um, but, you know, we've been in this industry long enough that we made the call to post it and to wait up and see what would happen. And then lo and behold, at midnight, sorry, the Apple stores went down. The Apple stores went down first. Apple online store closed. That is routine. We went to status.apple.com. We looked at it. It said the Apple stores were down for maintenance. They'd be down for four hours. Apple does this all the time, so I wasn't, you know, I, I couldn't really say that that was evidence in its favor because it could have gone either way. But then, lo and behold, they came back up. Apple says at 3:18, I believe it to be earlier. I remember it being like 3 3:01 or 3:02, and there was a Retina iPad Mini available for order. Um, before we get into the reasons for it, Peter, I I was stunned. I did not think they were going to do it. Yeah, so was I. You know, I figured that we would have. 
uh, a much um, uh, m much more time. Um, I figured that this would be something that Apple would really uh, hype up and, and want people to to get in line at the stores for. But no, they just kind of sneaked it out. And Richard, I mean, the interesting thing too is uh, members of the media who review Apple products were only getting them the next. We're only getting them that morning. Like I know people who were on their way to get them when you know this story started breaking, and that's highly unusual because usually there's reviews posted well in advance of the public launch. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we we all know sort of from from even just from the last couple of months, the iPhone 5s, the 5c, the iPad Air. You know, the first reviews started appearing a couple of days before the uh, before the products go on sale. This was just completely different. Obviously, we know for you know we know we know pretty much nailed on that pe the the earliest devices were getting handed out sort of late Tuesday. So the fact that I woke up, you know, Wednesday morning, got messages from you, that, you know, look at look just check in the news feeds and check Regent gone Street, wild. check Regent Street. Yeah, it's like what? <laughs> I only went to sleep for a few hours. It, you know, it just didn't. It, on the one hand, it was kind of it was kind of refreshing that we'd been taken completely by surprise. But on the but you know on the other hand, we, it's like where do you go from there? What 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 do you do? Do you order? Do you not order? And it left us with a whole different set of questions. So here's a wacky thing for me, Peter, and why this was a particularly strange launch for me is it seemed like a lot of people inside Apple didn't know about it. Like the GSX had it, but. Um, people at Apple, people at Apple retail didn't seem prepared for a launch. I know stock started arriving, but for example, a lot of retail people thought that it would be available. Well, I should, I should press it by saying Apple didn't make it available in stores. You can order it online or you could go online and reserve it for pickup at a store and you would see a, a continually refreshing view of what kind of stock they had and you could order the specific model and you could only get the specific model that you ordered. But for example, I saw it go live while I was recording MacBreak, um, and it was supposed to only go live that, according to retail sources, it was supposed to go live that night for pickup the next day. I was able to reserve it for that day. I ran over there, and the store lead, like store, every store has a bunch of managers, they have a store lead. Uh, the store lead had heard that it was only going to be the next day. Um, I showed him the reservation; it was available for pickup. He was happy. I mean, he was happy to sell it. They just didn't know they'd be able to. Uh, and that again, to me, and you know, Peter is is a sign that this was maybe a very, uh, like a small group of people planned this and decided on the date and let it fly. Uh, I don't want to say last minute, but it was surely not the usual schedule. It wasn't the usual schedule, but I think that um, the the reason for it is pretty obvious, and that is because they've got a very limited amount of supply. They couldn't really stockpile uh, inventory like they they had. Um, uh, or they've had leading up to other major product uh, announcements. We've been hearing for a while uh, rumors from the channel that um, uh, supply was going to be constrained because of low yields on the uh, uh, displays and maybe some other factors that were causing um, not as many of these to be made as, as perhaps Apple would like to see. But, um, uh, you know, clearly Apple wasn't ready for... Uh, people just to show up en masse at the stores, uh, especially people lining up ahead of time hoping to get their hands on one. They really had to meet out um, the available inventory to people who uh, were, were, were willing to do the, the personal pickup um, through, the, through the Apple stores to get them. And, of course, they've got a very limited supply uh, going out to other uh, major resellers and also to uh, the carrier stores. Uh, we just saw John Ledger from T-Mobile today say, uh, we've got the iPad uh, uh, mini in stock, but not a lot of them, which mm -hmm. kind of tells you everything that you need to know. Well, Apple, in, they did put out a press release. Um, I believe you caught it for us. Early, you guys caught it for us early in the morning. Uh, and it said, you know, available at carriers, and carriers were telling us, uh, we know nothing about this. Yeah. Uh, Richard, I was talking, like I said, I was talking to Mark Gurman about this for this week's episode of Vector, and we were discussing how this was the best of the bad options for Apple because, you know, given their druthers, they love to do big product launches, but you can't do big product launches when you only have dozens of units in stock. You will piss off everybody who's lining up for it. I mean, except for the very few people first in line. Sometimes they're scalpers, but whatever. You, you just you won't make people happy having a product launch with 12 units. If you delay, then Wall Street's going to hammer you. People are going to say Apple's losing it. They can't even get iPad supply. 
if you don't announce it this year, then it's like, oh, where happened to the Retina iPad era? You know, Google went Retina, you know, months ago. Where is the Retina? There was no good choice, and it seems like, you know, to Peter's point, this allowed the people who wanted it most to get it, and a lot of people will still get it in time for the holidays. It's just not done in the way they usually could do it. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the uh, the, the key factor. You know, it's it, Apple would not have wanted to do it this way if they if they had the choice. The fact is, once they've obviously confirmed that the device exists, they've said that they you know they've launched it, then they have to deliver on it. And uh, I just think back to the iPhone 5s launch. You know, the the supplies were constrained in the gold one obviously in particular but um, you know we, we were all queuing up in various different locations for that and where I was about half of the queue got sent home empty-handed there were there weren't enough iPhones so I, I cannot imagine that stocks of the uh, of the retina mini even approach from what we're hearing the the amount that they would have had for the iPhone and that you know people were getting turned away there so it just it, it would have been more bad press if they'd done it that way and done, yeah, who here it is, everybody come down to the stores, pick it up, all the clapping and cheering, but, you know, 12 people have bought one. What, so what do you was, do? What was your story, Richard? Because I know like we were talking, you were, you, were, you were calling local stores. How did you get your iPad mini? Well, I, I started calling around as, as soon as my closest stores were opening up, and um, the, the staff were typically cagey, though. You know, we, we we don't know, we can't tell you anything, that sort of thing. But I did get one kind of snippet of, of something good out of uh, out of one guy at my local store. He said, keep checking online today. I don't know whether he meant to say today, but he kind of just dropped it in there at the end, keep checking today. So we were we, we found the, um, the in-store pickup page, and we were kept refreshing that, and nothing happening, nothing happening, nothing happening. I actually went out to run a few errands with my wife, came back, oh, it's now live. But you've got to come and pick it up by seven o'clock tonight. So there we go. Reserve one, whatever we could get in the car. It's a, about an hour's drive, hour and a half's drive. Uh, massive thank you to my wife because she dropped everything and turned and drove me because I don't have a car at the moment. And uh, we ran in, grabbed one, and uh, and got it bought that way. But the 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 chap that served me in the store, he um, he was saying how he turned up for his shift earlier in the day, and it was literally he was pulled to one side and just said, "Oh, by the way." We're going to be selling the iPad Mini later on today, but only to you know people are going to have to come in and collect them. There was a little sign out the front of the store saying, "If you if you're here for the iPad Mini, come find uh, what, you know one of our one of our staff and we'll and we'll deal with you." And that was it. It was so low key, but it it was the strangest strangest day. You needed to be out in the alley in the in in back, and one of Rafi's cousins was going to hook you up. <laughs> So mine was weird too because I, again I'd heard that it was only going to be available um, at night to pick up the next day. But as I was, uh, I'm OCD, so I I keep refreshing the page over and over again because I'm convinced that it's going to happen and I'm going to miss it. So I kept refreshing the page and all of a sudden it went live. Like it was crazy because uh, Nova Scotia was the only store that was live in the morning, but it had but they had no stock. And then slowly more stores no stock. Um, then. All of a sudden, my store went live and it had stock, and I reserved it. But I was doing Mac break at the time, and Leo's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm reserving an iPad." And he's like, "Well, are we going to watch you do it live?" And I'm like, "Yes, that's fine." Um, but then it was only available from 3 to 4 p.m. Like it, they gave you a time when you had to pick it up, and I'm sure they're not draconian about it. But still, Mac break was only going to finish around 3:30, 4 o'clock. So we finished the show. I jumped in the car. I drove over there. Like I said, they didn't know they were allowed to sell it. I had to show them the email confirmation that they were allowed to sell it. And then uh, front of the house called back of the house, back of the house said, we're not allowed to sell it. And they said, oh, yes, we are. Apparently, it went live at 2 p.m. Um, and then I had to wait for them to go get everything ready because it, you know, it wasn't all set up yet. So eventually, I got my iPad mini. I bought it. Um, no, no LTE, no cellular versions. I always buy the cellular version because I use it as a hotspot. Uh, and I just like the fact that I can be totally independent on it if I need to be. None of those were available, so I picked up a 16 gigabyte Space Gray um, Retina Mini just for the review, so I could get started on the review. Um, and uh, again, there, there was a couple other people in line. One of our local TV personalities, Bob Benedetti um, from CTV TV, Television, was there trying to get one as well, because um, it turned out you could get it for review at the store faster than you could get it through any other source. Uh, Peter, I, I, it just feels like Apple is, they're trying to get stuff out as fast as they can. They're not going to wait and put it out in the spring when it would be more leisurely released for them. It, that 
uh, that iPad 4 event when they said the the pedal is to the metal and they're you know they're they're putting their foot down on the gas. I think that's really true. I think they're trying to get this stuff out as absolutely fast as they can. Yeah, you know, this is this has become the 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 healthcare.gov rollout of uh, of iOS devices. Um, I, you know, I, I pedal to the metal is one thing, but this this is this is just weird. You know, this is nothing to say except how weird uh, this rollout is because you know this this is a hot commodity item. This is something that I think there's a lot of pent up demand for. You know, people have been waiting for the iPad Mini to be refreshed almost since the iPad Mini came out last year. Um, and look, we we knew that 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 availability was going to be constrained on it from the start. You know, it, it's it it hasn't been a big secret, but. Uh, uh, you know, still a, a stealth rollout is, is sends a confusing message um, uh, to users. But I, you know, Apple is is not um, uh, obviously trying to um, uh, dissuade people from buying them. You know, it's just that uh, the availability is so constrained; they really have no choice but um, to uh, to to make people um, jump through a, a, a few hoops uh, in order to get them. All right, so let's move on. Now we have them in our hands. Richard, you did the first uh, unboxing, the first photos. What was your impression when you turned it out? Is it what you expected? Is the quality good? Some people have been complaining about the screen being more washed out. What's your What's your quick take on it? Uh, I don't know so much about the washed out thing. I mean, I've been I've been trying to look at it today and 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 see if I can and see anything. But uh, I said it in one of our uh, in one of our comment threads. The display on this thing is so bright and so sharp; it's cutting my eyeballs. It's phenomenal, you know. The, just just whipping it out of the box. I didn't have the original mini that I held off for the display because I just didn't like the display on the original one. But I'm taking this one out, firing it up for the first time. It, immediately, it's just it, it's it's so so nice to look at. It's it's I'm, I, I, it, it was a lot of work to get one, but I'm really pleased that I did. So I, like I said, I didn't notice either. Uh, the display looked gorgeous to me when I put it side by side with my Air. I did notice that it's, it's not the color temperature is no different, but the intensity is slightly different. Like the blues are a little bit more saturated, the reds are a little bit more saturated on the iPad Air. But I can only notice that when I put them side by side. I, if I take one of them away, because uh, the thing about human beings is human beings are remarkable at pattern correction. Um, and it doing all sorts of small corrections. It's the reason why we don't notice spelling mistakes. It's the reason why we can sense, you know, abstract patterns out of things. Uh, we're really bad at empirically measuring things with our eyes because it's not evolutionarily beneficial to do that. So if I just look at the iPad Mini, it looks fantastic. I wouldn't tell anyone not to get an iPad uh, Mini. I mean, maybe if you have your brain is wired. I know there's some designers who can tell minute differences in colors. You know, just by looking at it, I can't. Looking at it by itself, right now, looks absolutely uh, fantabulous to me. Yeah, I can't uh, say anything. I, there, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this display, as far as as far as uh, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, there's there's inevitably there's going to be uh, panels out there that have got issues, that have got faults. But I mean, thankfully for me, mine is not one of them. It's uh, I cannot stop looking at it, and uh, and I took it to an event with me yesterday, and I was showing it to a couple of people who obviously you were taking not, photographs with it. We saw I you. I was taking photographs with it at the Moto G event, just because it was, you know it could be good for the review and all that sort of thing. But um, you know, I mean, I, I was showing it around and to, to people who've obviously dealt with uh, the likes of the new Nexus Seven and you know the 1080p tablets and stuff, and nobody said the display is disappointing in any way. It's such a massive, massive leap. From the original iPad Mini, that the increase in in baseline price is worth it just on this alone, if you ask me. So, uh, Peter, this is basically the same density, the same 326 PPI as an iPhone, but in a 7.9 inch panel. Uh, that's denser than the iPad Air, even though it's physically smaller. But at least for me, it makes for a very impressive looking machine. Yeah, absolutely. You know the uh, the the pixel density on uh, the iPad Mini is, um, as, as you point out, it's it's higher than the iPad Air. It's the same as the iPhone, and uh, you know what that means is that you can get that much closer to it and still not see pixels. 
Um, but you know, using it at, at a normal arm's length or anything you know in between, um, it's 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 a very sharp image, and uh, um, you know, obviously um, they they had to. Uh, um, there, there are a lot of pixels on that screen um, that they had to drive compared to the original iPad Mini. That's an awesome point. That's actually something I wanted to ask you about because it came out after the teardowns were done and after the measurements were taken. The iPhone 5S has an A7 processor clocked at 1.4 gigahertz. The iPad, sorry, at 1.3 gigahertz. The iPad Air is clocked at 1.4 gigahertz. The iPad Mini Retina is clocked at 1.3 gigahertz, so it's as fast as the iPhone 5S, not as fast as the iPad Air. My understanding is that's for thermal reasons, but um, is that human measurably di like? Is that a human difference? Would you notice that, Peter, uh, just in everyday use? I don't think you're going to notice it in, uh, in 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 too much that you're doing with the iPad Mini at this point. And you know, to be clear. It's the same A7 processor. It's just clocked at a different speed. So yeah. it's just as capable as the iPhone 5S. It's just as capable as the iPad Air. And it's nearly as fast as the Air. But, yeah, I mean, we should expect um, that maybe for thermal or battery life reasons um, uh, that the that the, uh, uh, that the iPad mini with retina display was going to have some kind of difference. Um, in order to accommodate, so that it shouldn't really be a surprise. You know, you're talking about uh, basically a hundred megahertz difference. Um, that's that's something that bench benchmark fanatics that uh, or spec monkeys, as I like to call them, um, are going to be real interested in. But I don't think it's anything uh, that that's going to be demonstrably different in day to day use for the average human being. So just to be clear what we're talking about, these are clock speeds. So this is what it does when it's not doing anything else, right? Right, exactly. So it's not like you're going to hit something and it's going to be, you know, it's going to take three seconds longer for the screen to change. This is mostly just the amount of cycles a processor can, can go through when nothing else is happening to it. Precisely. You know, it's, it, and I mean, under certain processor intensive um, operations. Obviously, clock speed is going to make a difference, but again, we're talking about 100 megahertz here. We're not talking about a gulf of difference um, like you would from going from like a MacBook Air to a MacBook Pro, for example. That's a big leap in processor performance, which is why the MacBook Pros are so much faster. So, Richard, you've got both. I've got both. Have you noticed the speed difference? Has anything been obviously slower or worse with the uh, Retina Mini than the Air for you? Not at all, not at all. I've basically got the same apps on both. I've run the same games, and so far everything is pretty much exactly the same. I sort of meant, you know, I mentioned it in the uh, in the first video we did. It's basically an iPad Air in a smaller frame, so I wasn't ex honestly I wasn't expecting anything uh, anything troubling, but so far so good for sure. Uh, I I think it was Steve Stratton Smith, Steve Trotton Smith, sorry, on Twitter who was pointing this out. But for some reason, the iPads seem to have more motion blur than the iPhones, both the Air and the iPad Mini. Um, their processors are the same, so I'm guessing that that is just either because more distance is covered on the larger screens, or just an iOS 7 thing. But it it hasn't bothered me at all. I mean, I'm when you well, he's he did some slow motion video and he freeze he froze. What's the past tense of freeze frame? Free framed or froze framed? I don't know. He froze framed it, um, and yet yeah, you you can you can see the app icons trailing when you when you swipe back and forth. But that also hasn't bothered me at all. I, I, honestly, I, I mean, I don't necessarily look as close as some people might do for that. But again, it, they, they both feel, in terms of using them, they both feel as fast as each other. So uh, as long as I'm not seeing anything lagging. That's the you know that's the main thing. It's little little things like that doesn't doesn't bother me at all. So the question that we've been getting incessantly incessantly since launch is which one should I get? Which one are you getting? Which one would you rather? And I think that we're getting it so often because it is really really hard to decide this year. And in just two days of using them. When I use the iPad Air, I miss the lightness of the iPad Mini. But when I use the iPad Mini, I miss uh, the size of the iPad Air. And it's ridiculous. I called it on Twitter a first Goldilocks problem, um, you know, because, you know, not one is just right. But that's what it feels like to me. It feels like you still have to make a choice. I know some people said you finally got 
the mini with the retina. But I like full-size iPads. Um, I use them for very different things. And what it occurred to me is it's an entirely a glass full versus glass em glass half full versus glass half empty thing. If you have the full size, if you if you like the idea of an iPad Mini, you'll say, oh, you know, it's as dense as the it's it's got as good a screen as the original iPad. Now I'm happy. If you like the big iPad, you'll say, oh, it's much lighter. It's got the design of the iPad Mini now, and you'll be happy. So Peter, I think this i this problem is so difficult for people because they have to bring more. There, there more is required of them to decide. Finally, there's no easy out anymore. Yeah, I mean, I I would say it's 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 safe to to say that it, it, it unless you are absolutely strapped, unless you you really just don't have the money, um, you should really um, opt for at least a 32 gig iPad Mini. Um, I think it's it, it's safe to recommend something above the 16 gigabyte. Uh, uh, base model, if you can afford it. If money is really tight, if 400 bucks is all you've got, then get that one. But beyond that, you know, there there are obviously options as to whether or not you go Wi-Fi or uh, 4G and Wi-Fi. And uh, this time around, I'm going 4G, and this is the first time since 2011 I'm going to have a cell-capable iPad because um, the, the difference for me this year, you know, living in the U.S. is that T-Mobile is, is giving people free... Uh, uh, free data, and, and that was enough of a draw for me to say, yeah, you know what, I'll spend the extra 130 because I don't need it all the time. Uh, in fact, I only need it rarely, but when I want to be able to access email or do something else quick uh, without being on a Wi-Fi hotspot, I, I really want that capability, and, and this this will give it to me, so I don't really see a big uh, um, uh, loss there for, for having to, to shell out the extra money. Um, you know, but you're you're absolutely right. It it puts um, the onus on on people in a very different way to figure out which one that they're going to get. And there's the other thing I think that that's got some people wringing their hands is the fact that there is a pretty distinct price difference between the standard iPad Mini um, and the iPad Mini with Retina display. You know, when 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 they they announced the iPad Mini with Retina display, they dropped the price of the standard iPad Mini to two ninety nine, and they kept it in the product matrix. Um, so, you know, if you want the Mini with Retina display, it's $100 more. You get a lot for that $100. You get the A7 processor and the M7 coprocessor. You get uh, the Retina display, and you get, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, all the benefits that... that, that the that, MIMO! That, right, exactly. All the benefits that that, that improved uh, processing capability gives you. Uh, but, uh, you know, ultimately, these are commodity electronics devices, and some people are not going to want to spend the money um, there are some people who are not going to see the see the benefit necessarily, um, and now the 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 playing field is more complicated than ever uh, to figure out between um, iPad Mini with Retina display, um, uh, iPad Mini regular, iPad Air, or even iPad Two. You know that's still an option too. See, with the with the MacBook Airs, we used to get asked this a lot: 11 inch versus 13 inch. And yes, there's the same travel, you know, port, ultimate portability argument to me there. But with the 13 inch iPad, sorry, um, MacBook Air, you actually get more pixels, and you actually get a much more powerful processor, uh, or at least the options for it. So for me, that's still a clearer difference. Where with this. It literally comes down to 100 megahertz and the size. And the thing I've been saying, Richard, is um, if you're using, if you think the lack of size is going to bug you, then go for the Air. If you think the weight is going to bug you, then go for the Mini. It's based entirely on your personal preference. I tried to do everything I could with it. I watched videos, I read comic books, I used um, VNC. I did everything I do with a normal app. And to me, they end up being very different devices. Like I said, I was bugged by the lack of size, but I was also bugged by the lack of weight. Yeah, and I mean, I've, I've been in the, the the undecided camp since the iPad Air came out because, as I said on a previous show, I was all about getting the Mini. Uh, now I've got both in my hand, and I'm trying to think what... I'm, I, I don't want to get rid of either, of either one of them. I can find a, a, a... You know, I'm fortunate enough, but I can find a... a place for both of them. So the the Mini, um, I do actually do a little bit of sort of offline work with the Air. So I'm thinking the Mini is going to be more of like a media consumption thing. I, I can only pick up a 16 gig Wi-Fi because that's literally, it was either that or a 
huge Wi-Fi one, no cellular were available. So I'm actually thinking I'm going to use it until availability is a bit better, get a cellular one, and this is going to be the one that comes, goes everywhere with me when we travel about, when we go to events. Because it is, you know, the, the weight even isn't that much. I mean, I can, I'm holding them both now, and it's, it's, it's uncanny how alike they are, apart from the physical size. You know, there, there really isn't that much in the weight anymore. So, you know, even I could say go to a store and pick one up and hold, you know, hold them both, one in each hand, and see which one feels the best for you. But even then, it literally is size. the The weight is not an issue. It, it just hasn't. It's not an issue like it has been with the iPad Four compared to the original Mini. These literally are identical. Just one's big and one's small. So. Peter, you I, and I, I'm sorry, I keep doing this to you, but you work in retail. You are a linebacker between, you know, Apple and customers. You're on the front <laughs> lines. People are going to come into you and say Air or Mini. How how are you going to broach that subject with them? Well, people already have been. I mean, the iPad Mini has been <clears throat> very popular um, ever since its introduction. A lot of it comes down to to what how people are using um, the device. Uh, you know, I personally think the iPad Air is a better uh, uh, a better system to use if you want to be um, uh, reading magazines, newspapers, uh, comic books, graphic novels, watching movies, because you've got the increased uh, screen real estate to do it. Um, you know, the the um, uh, the the larger screen certainly appeals to some of at the reseller that I work at some of our older customers because. Um, their eyes don't work as well, or they may not have the dexterity um, to um, to 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 touch um, the, the the smaller iPad screen and get stuff to happen. I know it sounds crazy, but if you've got rheumatoid arthritis, that's a very real issue. Or uh, you know, if you're suffering a disability and don't have um, the, the kind of dexterity because of whatever your disability might be doing, having a larger surface can well, certainly help right. you. I don't. I want to hear what the rest of you say, but I just want to point out that that's absolutely very true. Because while the interface is identical, uh, and all the buttons are have a touch target of 44 points, 44 points on a 246, uh, whatever it is, on on a iPad Air versus a 326 machine is different. Like it, it's much smaller on the Mini. Right. Exactly. So you know, we we've had customers come in by the Mini and bring it back the next day, saying, "I can't use this. This isn't like my old iPad. I had an original iPad and." You know, the I could read stuff much easier, and I could, uh, I could, I could, I could press uh, icons much easier. You know, they just that that uh, that level of dexterity isn't there, and that level of eyesight, that that visual acuity may not be there as well. So, uh, that's one thing. The other thing is, what exactly are you going to be doing with it? Do you want to play games on it? Do you want um, to surf the web? Do you, you know? So it, it's it's really on a case by case basis. Um, but uh, you know, stick with iMore because uh, uh, you know we're, we're certainly going to pit the iPad uh, Mini with Retina Display up against the iPad Air and see how they come out. Absolutely. If, if you thought the UFC was you know a knockdown drag out, the UI ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, so like I said, I've been putting it through its paces, and I read a lot of comic books, and a lot of the people on Twitter have been asking me specifically about comic books uh, because previously the iPad 4 was the go-to comic book device just because it was roughly the same size as a traditional comic book pamphlet, and it was Retina. Uh, and when you looked at, at comic books on the Mini, not only was it small, but it was also not as sharp, and it makes a difference when you want to read really tiny um, word bubbles without zooming in and zooming out a lot. Uh, and what I found is the, the Retina iPad mini screen is so good that I didn't have to zoom. I could read it just having it on the page. So yes, it is smaller. Uh, and given my druthers, I still prefer the iPad Air. In fact, you know, I buy the oversized omnibus and uh, absolute versions of my favorite DC and Marvel comics. And those are, I forget the size of those, maybe... 11 by 17 or something. They're ridiculously big because I love seeing that artwork. Um, but if, if you want to have something to travel with, the iPad Mini now to me is first class citizen and that applies to books too because I don't know if you remember Richard but with the, uh, well, of course you, remember, you had one of the devices, when you got to small text on the on the original iPad Mini, you could easily see the pixels. It was not as legible and now it's 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 brain bogglingly clear. Yeah, the, the the text thing and the pixels is exactly why I didn't buy the original Mini for myself. You know, I opted for the uh, for the iPad 4 
for that display. I tr traded off the size and the convenience for the for the display. And you're absolutely right. I mean, I'm I'm not a I'm not a comic book reader, but uh, just I you know I do read through magazines and books and things. And the mini is it's as good for reading uh, things like ebooks. Um, I've uh, I've much preferred using that in the you know in the couple of days since we've had it for reading through things like Kindle books and and that because the size is more like a book. But when it comes to the magazines, things through newsstand, I'm still going to the air because it's you've got that extra, you've just physically got the extra size and uh, and it kind of feels like a magazine as well. And when I'm in that kind of frame of mind, I'm sort of sat back and resting on on my leg. And uh, so it the they're both as good as each other, I think, in terms of uh, you can use one and not, and not be disadvantaged uh, as so much anymore as you may have been before. But I mean, the the, the display on the mini is just for for something that small, it is it is phenomenal. You can read small text without having to zoom in, and it, it just always looks crisp and clean, and you don't have to strain your eyes. Even going back to the old sort of big iPads, I had the the, the original iPad, and it, it it felt like a strain sometimes reading the text because it wasn't that clear and you know the, the, it was a little pixelated around the edges. Eyes would get tired, and it, it's it, I haven't seen that so far in the in the mini. I was reading on the train last night on the way back from London, and nothing. It, it's just a it's a pleasurable experience now. So Peter, I. I didn't have a chance to look at this yet, but it looks like Apple has finally, I'm going to use the finally word because it's warranted here, finally updated iBooks to iOS 7 now that we're speaking about reading. That's right. That uh, came out uh, today on Thursday afternoon. Um, you know, it's it, it's about time. It, 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 uh, um, iOS 7, uh, you know, of course, debuted in September. And uh, when it did, most of the apps that Apple includes as part of the basic package uh, we're updated to take advantage of the new uh, uh, visual design of iOS 7 that makes it so distinctive from iOS 6. But there were a couple of exceptions. Uh, iBooks was one of them. Um, you know, it retained its skeuomorphic uh, uh, bookcase interface. You would launch it's wood it. Wood paneling. Yeah, you would see. You would exactly see a wood paneled uh, bookcase. Um, and the other one was, or an, another one was iTunes U. Uh, which is uh, the app that lets you look at full college courses um, uh, on your iOS device. And today, Apple released updates to both those apps um, to give them a more consistent look and feel uh, for iOS 7. So what do you? Th I haven't had a chance. I'm downloading it right now, but do you think it works? Is it good? Yeah, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. You know, I think skeuomorphism works in some places, but I don't think that it works. I, I, I don't think it's necessary. Um, to get to the content that you want to get to here. You know, in an app like GarageBand, for example, uh, where you've got musicians um, uh, uh, creating uh, music and, you know, there, there are uh, digital versions of analog instruments that they're accustomed to or there are digital versions of instruments and, um, uh, and, and uh, machine interfaces in that app uh, that they're accustomed to outside of the computer. I think skeuomorphism makes sense. But... You know, iBooks are eBooks. You know, we we don't need. Oh, we we all know what they do. We all know um, how they, how they work. So having a, a wood paneled bookcase is just a twee bit of interface rubbish that's really unnecessary. I think these days. So I'm going to hold it. Up. I just downloaded. It. I'm going to hold it up to the uh, camera for those watching on on YouTube or downloading the video version of the podcast. So it looks like the newsstand app. It just has a white gradient instead of the wood paneling, um, and when you go into a what have I downloaded already when you go into something it just looks you know very very newsstandy very iworky update very clean um, and I don't I don't think that's bad at all here's this landscape mode Renee doesn't look at any books without pictures in them so <laughs> uh, no that's not, I actually I just downloaded dogfight and I started reading it um, because it looks interesting that's the book about uh, that's Vogelson's book about the feud between Apple and Google, and here is a, an example of, you know, that the text just looks fantastic. Portrait mode. Uh, it just looks really, really nice on the iPad Mini. Sorry. So I've just downloaded it as well, and uh, this is what mine still looks like. 
You didn't download it right. You downloaded it wrong. I've literally just gone and hit download from the App Store. So I don't know. Check for updates again, or maybe it hasn't maybe arrived in England yet. Maybe something's broken. It's on. It's on the boat. The slow. James May is driving it. The uh, same things. The same thing looks like it's happened with iTunes U as well. I've literally just gone to the front page in the App Store and hit download and. That's Jeremy got, Clarkson so. drove it to America. James May drove it to the UK. So you have a couple oh. days left to wait. Oh, no, here we go. There's there's an update. So it looks like I've got to download it and then update and then download it again. Nice. Awesome. So that leaves conspicuously that leaves Find My Friends, which was famously Steve Jobs's airplane sofa leather and you know stitched leather inspired design as one of the few remaining apps I think that I'm at least I'm not aware that it's been updated yet. I don't think it has. That and Keynote Remote, which I don't think has been updated since Keynote Remote was released. We can probably let that one slide. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm not sure that uh, we're going to see major overhauls. I think those are just, you know, being left by the wayside through neglect or something. I don't know. <laughs> right, so let's, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. So let's, let's just wrap this up. Peter, you're firmly in the iPad Mini. That's going to be your go-to iPad for this generation? Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Richard, you're you're gonna get both. Are you or do you are you leaning one way or the other? Uh, I'm I'm definitely gonna keep both. I think I'm probably gonna end up using the iPad Air around the house. Um, and the Mini, I took it away with me on my first road trip yesterday, and I think that's probably gonna be my. Uh, I, I can't now. I've picked both of them up. I couldn't I couldn't get rid of one and, and just go to go to one of my. I've made I've made a reason to keep both. I think. <laughs> When the cellular versions are a little bit uh, more widespreadly available, I may trade up to a, a cellular one for, for the Mini. I just, as we were talking, reserved a cellular one at the downtown store. So once again, after during a podcast, <laughs> I reserved one. After the podcast, I will tear rubber. Uh, and I have to go downtown to the flagship store for this one. So it'll be worth it, though. 32 gigabyte LTE silver. Very nice. Like you, I am I am not going to choose. Uh, I'm going to use the Mini for travel because it fits in the back pocket of my non-hipster jeans. And I'm going to use the iPad Air at home for comic books and videos and VNC and and all the tasks that I think really do benefit from a bigger screen. But I realize that is you know completely a first nerd problem. Um, and I make no justification for it other than I work for an Apple website and I can get away <laughs> with it. Um, without... Save it. So I think the, my... the important thing is that you don't... Whichever you choose now, it, as long as you don't go for the iPad 2, you're not a, 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 you're not at a glaring disadvantage. You're not losing out on screen resolution. You're not losing out on performance. It's literally big or small. There yeah. there is no 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 other compromise anymore. So whichever you go for, you're gonna be impressed. All right. So two quick follow-ups, Richard. Uh, now that Apple's high-density small tablet is on the market, the Nexus 7 is on the market. Nokia has announced their 20, sorry, 2520? Yes, 2520, uh, I think. So yes, many numbers, is. BlackBerry is jealous. But if you miss the 9900 series, you can get the 5220 series. Uh, <laughs> product names are hard. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about the state of the small tablet this year? Is there any, is Apple still clearly ahead? Is it a trade-off? Are there no bad choices anymore? It's, it's a tough one. It is a tough one because the... Yeah, the the new Nexus 7 is perfectly capable, um, but if you're gonna if you're gonna make a if, if you're in if you if you're an iPad user, I wouldn't ever recommend leaving and going and choosing another one, um, because the the small tablet now is equal to the big tablet. The the fact that you know I said before, there's no compromise. You're not losing out on anything by getting the smaller one. It's a little bit more expensive than the competition, but it's it's worth it. You've got the the app ecosystem behind it, Apple's content, and the display is just phenomenal. I my eyes probably aren't good enough to tell any differences, but I just I, I just think it's one of the best. It's probably the best small tablet display I've seen, and somebody else might disagree, but I I, I definitely think it's it's definitely the uh, the leader for me. But it comes down to price. Some of the other tablets are a lot lot cheaper. Yeah, I think I think the argument still. I think with phones now, there's an absolute parity. You can get great phones on every platform. With tablets, um, I think that 
you know, there's certain advantages to the iPad Mini because a 4x3 uh, aspect ratio means there's a lot more pixels than a 16x10 uh, tablet screen just because of the aspect ratio. Um, but I think Apple's still far ahead with the amount of apps that they offer. Like, there's almost half a million tablet-optimized apps. Uh, they sell content in far more countries than than Google or Amazon. I mean, I still can't get the Amazon Kindle, uh, Fire HDX in Canada, uh, can't even get Amazon MP3 in Canada. Um, whatever they promised it to me in 2008. <laughs> Screw you, Amazon. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think in that regard, um, Apple is ahead. And Peter, I, I made people really angry um, a, cu- a couple weeks ago when I said that no other company except for Apple could make an iPhone 5S because you know I got called a fanboy, and that's fine. It's part of the job. Uh, and I said that again in my iPad Air review, which I put up yesterday. Um, no other company in the world, I don't think any other company in the world could make an iPad Air or an iPad Retina Mini. And what I mean by that is it combines Apple's money and their patience. Uh, you know, like other companies, like Samsung is spending as much on manufacturing, but you look at a Galaxy Note with the plastic and the stitch, you know, the fake stitched leather plastic, and you look at a Galaxy S4 and it's, you know, cheap, it's cheap plastic. It's nowhere near as nicely built as an HTC phone, and I like, as a consumer, I like that Apple is investing in a quality product. I like that, you know, seven years ago, they were buying chip companies like PA Semi because they knew they wanted to make custom silicon, and by doing that, I now benefit from an A7, which has so much more advantage than a off-the-shelf Qualcomm or, you know, some other processor. I like the fact that they're buying frickin' laser beams and uh, robots <laughs> so that they can make really thin aluminum chassis. And I know there's trade-offs. I know I can get more form factors on other platforms. But I uh, cheapness, I'm lucky that cheapness is not the primary feature for me. And I like that there's a company servicing it, like just trying to make the best technology they can make. Yeah, I can't disagree with you. Whether or not somebody else could make an iPhone 5S or an iPad Air or an iPad Mini with Retina Display uh, is, is really a hard thing to know. Um, ultimately, but one thing that we can be sure of, Apple does a better job of synthesizing together um, the the creation of a very robust operating system and a really beautiful hardware design, and is is able to 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 do not only that but also provide a very robust ecosystem of third party apps and content. Uh, available for those de- that that device and or those devices, and in that respect, Apple um, does a, a far superior job of that um, than the sort of disjointed efforts that we see in uh, the Android marketplace, or you know even Microsoft with uh, um, with its its various Windows incarnations. So yeah, you know in that respect, I think Apple is 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 far and away a superior solution. So sort of the last thing, I agree with all of that, but sort of the last thing I want to touch on is uh, doing these reviews, I was looking at the iPad, so the iPod Touch, which is the same as last year, though now it comes in space gray, same design. That same design is on the iPad Mini now, and that same design is on the iPad Air. That same design is not on the iPhone. The iPhone doesn't have the same curve back. It's it's of the same ilk. You can tell it's the same company that made it, but it's not the exact same design the way that all the non-phones are. And it made me sort of wonder about the future. I know we're getting all sorts of cockamamie iPhone 6 um, rumors now, but you know, Apple is in pursuit of this Platokian, Platokian ideal for a phone, and I wonder if eventually they'll be able to do a phone that looks like um, an iPod Touch, You know, maybe with a bigger screen, maybe with less... Uh, face and more screen on it, uh, like like the story is when that Steve Jobs and Johnny Ive originally wanted an all aluminum phone, and you know the radio engineers had to tell them that radio waves just don't go through aluminum, uh, and we've had a series of compromises since then, and that's not going to change entirely. Uh, but I wonder, Richard, if you know maybe the iPhone six or the iPhone seven will be the same, unbelievably light, rounded off, edged. Um, we've heard rumors of curved glass now, and that makes a lot of sense given all the bezel gestures that are in iOS 7. If we'll get a more organic shape for the iPhone that matches, the, so the entire line looks complete. It's it's not. Uh, it's perhaps not as crazy as it sounds. I mean, we're, we're all expecting a redesign for the next iPhone based on the fact that we're kind of two years in. Well, we will be two years in with the current shape. Um, I would 
personally, I would like to uh, like to see that um, because the while well, you got the iPhone design and it's a you know it's a beautifully manufactured piece of equipment and it screams premium, but it is still basically rectangular. It, it's you know it's flat back, it's flat sides, it's a flat front, and it, it's it's not awkward to hold. But um, I mean the the example I, I've I got a, a Moto G yesterday at the press event, and it's you know it's it's just a cheap phone, but it has a curved back, and the curved back makes all the difference to when you're holding, regardless of price of you know this is a cheap phone, regardless of price, it the the difference just having some curves on a device makes, just it just sits into the hand that much better, and I I mean I mean that's a, a different story for a different day. But I can see them. I can see them. Maybe not in mimicking the the same shape and design as the rest of the products, because the iPhone is almost like the hero product. It's it it stands out on its own. But I think they're perhaps setting a precedent of of where they are going to start going and and moving towards that kind of look a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, I was as you were saying that. I mean, I just got the Nexus Five, and I also finally picked up a Lumia Ten Twenty. And I know intellectually those phones are the same size. They both have those. I think I forget. I think they both have five-inch screens at this point. Um, gorgeous 1080p five-inch screen on the Nexus Five. Uh, I don't believe the Lumia 1020 screen is that dense, but it still looks very nice. But holding them, it it, it feels easier to hold the Nexus Five than it does to hold the Lumia 1020 for some reason. And I think that's what you're talking about. The same reason it feels easier to hold an original iPhone or a 3GS or even the iPod Touch than the current iPhone is because it's just shaped more like your hand. And I think that is something that we might see more of again. Yeah, and it's like with the uh, the HTC One's a great example because that's a that's an aluminium uh, phone, <laughs> and uh, but it has the curve, but it has the curve back on it, and it's got quite a large screen. Uh, I don't know exactly how it's like 4.7 or something. It is quite a large screen. Uh, and it's quite a large phone, but the, the curved back on the back makes all the difference. Uh, I'm not saying it's a it's a nicer phone to hold or it's better made than the iPhone. It's just it, it, it it's just when you hold it, your hand wraps around it as opposed to feeling like you're having to grip onto something. It just sort of it, everything just flows together, and it, it's just it just feels a lot nicer in the in the hand. Peter, any anything to add to this, or are you just appalled that we're even talking about next generation products when we only just got this gen? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just <laughs> appalled at, at you guys and your your future thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I live in the future. I have to. All there right, so last thing, Peter, just I don't want to ignore the Mac. People would get really angry at me if I ignored the Mac. Maverick's got a mail update. Did it fix things? I mean, my stuff wasn't broken. I was fine, but do you have any sense of how much it fixed, if anything? It certainly improved things, but uh, I'm still uh, seeing reports and seeing myself some issues with Gmail accounts. The, the update was specifically... Uh, for Gmail. Um, uh, the background here is that Google's implementation of IMAP, um, which is uh, a, an email protocol, um, on Gmail is kind of non-standard to begin with. Um, and when Apple upgraded uh, uh, Mail and Mavericks, it broke the way that Mail worked with Gmail before. So a lot of people were seeing a lot of problems. Uh, some people are still seeing problems with uh, Mail and Mavericks. Specifically, they're seeing uh, 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 incoming mail uh, not arriving uh, when it should or being flagged incorrectly after it's been read or after it's been uh, categorized. Um, I'm assuming that there will just be tweaks further down, further down the road uh, to fix this, but uh, at the very least, uh, you know, it, it, the, uh, the update is out in the world, so if you've been having problems, by all means, install it and see if it helps to, to alleviate some of the problems that you're having. Now, I did have a wacky problem yesterday. I was, you know, of all things, I was working on a eulogy and I tried to email it, and I got it got bounced by Gmail saying that the content was not valid. And I, I was like, is there too many words about death in this thing? I, I didn't know what flagged it. And Google had a link saying, go here for more information. And of course, there's no, there's no more information on the link. But Derek Kessler told me that um, there's an ongoing issue where Gmail is bouncing the new document format for pages and numbers because they're bundles and not static document files. Um, and that seems to be biting a lot of people too. That's absolutely correct, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I had that problem, Renee, when I tried to send you last month's expense reports. Um, uh, the, the one solution for this, if you've run into this, is to save your documents in the older file format because that does save it as a singular file. 
um, and, uh, and Gmail will not have a problem with it. And this happens not only uh, with 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 outbound uh, emails uh, coming from your Gmail account, but if you try to send somebody who has a Gmail account um, and a a, uh, a new uh, document, they'll have this problem too. And to make it clear, this isn't specific to Mavericks, although it is one step removed from Mavericks because this is specific to the new versions of uh, the iWork applications that were released. Um, after Mavericks was was uh, was released as well. So if you're trying to send somebody a pages, numbers, or keynote document that's been created with one of the new versions, um, you're bound to run into some uh, some issues there. I, so I, and I, I swear this is absolutely the last thing, but it just occurred to me. I we get asked all the time, what do you think Apple's going to do with X, Y, or Z? And I never answer those questions because I don't, you know, anybody can guess. I, I don't put a lot of value in guessing. Um, but I am going to say that we are still waiting on one Apple product launch this year. We are still waiting on the new Mac Pro. And given what happened with the iPad Mini, I am not going to be surprised by any kind of launch that the new Mac Pro gets. <laughs> You know, I don't think we're going to see a repeat of the iPad uh, of the iPad Mini with Retina display when it comes to the new Mac Pro. I think that um, uh, <clears throat> you know, first there's there's a much more self-selecting market for the Mac Pro um, than there is for any of Apple's consumer products like the iPad Mini with Retina display. This is a machine that appeals to a very specific uh, select set of Mac users, um, and and they're professionals and they're willing to spend a lot of money to get a really maximum performance machine. Um, the other advantage that Apple has with the Mac Pro that it doesn't with the iPad Mini um, is that the Mac Pro is actually being assembled right here in the U.S. So um, its supply lines are going to be a little bit shorter, and it may have uh, better control over um, some of those manufacturing details um, than uh, than it can uh, with. Um, uh, the iPad Mini, and of course, we've already seen that the production line itself is in some semblance um, of, uh, of 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 uh, a production already, because Apple's already released videos from the production line showing the Mac Pro being assembled. So, uh, one hopes that uh, Apple's uh, stockpiling them. The, uh, somewhere in preparation. I'd also point out, Renee, that there's one other Mac model that we haven't seen an update for, and that's the Mac Mini. Now, the Mac. Peter? The, the Mac Mini is, you know, of course, the red-haired stepchild of the Mac family, but, you know, it's it's still a beloved machine, and um, it's been about a year since we've seen the last one, so uh, a lot of people are, are waiting to see that one get the Haswell update as well. Yeah, you wrote a piece on that. I'll make sure I link it because it's one of the more frequent. A lot of people love those machines. Yeah, they sure do. They're cheap, and they work great. Uh, all right, so that brings us to the end of this. Um, again, it, it, we were a bit all over the place, but the iPad mini launch was a bit all over the place, so it seemed fitting. <laughs> um, Peter Cohen, sir, where can people find out more about you? iMore.com and on uh, the, uh, the the Twitter face uh, .net at uh, uh, Flarg, F-L-A-R-G-H. And you and your lovely wife celebrated your anniversary, so congratulations again, sir. Thank you very much. 20 years together and hopefully many more. I, I heard she has you on a 99-year contract. That was just a rumor floating around Twitter. <laughs> that's, no, that's absolutely correct. <laughs> uh, Richard Devine, where can people find you? Uh, on imore.com every day and on Twitter at rica666. And occasionally moonlighting for Android Central like yesterday. Yeah, occasionally for Android Central. Uh, had a bit of a jaunt out yesterday for the, uh, the Moto G. That was interesting. So I understand that uh, at Phil Nickinson's... Uh, Behest, you are going to maybe write a little something comparing the Moto G with the iPhone uh, 5C, which did not turn out to be a budget phone the way the Moto G did. No, the the Moto G is definitely a budget phone. It's not necessarily an experience, but uh, yeah, they, they made this thing to a price rather than an idea. I'm waiting. I can't wait to read it. All right, guys, have a great one. You can find me at Rene Ritchie on all the social things. You can find me at imore.com. And for all of our shows, uh, including Vector, where we talk about media and analysis, um, uh, Iterate for designers, Debug for developers, Zenitech for lifestyle, and all the other network shows, just go to mobilenations.com. Thank you, Chatroom, for joining us. Uh, you guys were delightful, as always, mostly by making fun of us this time, it seems. But <laughs> we do appreciate it, keeping us honest. See you next week, guys. Goodbye. Bye.